Welcome to Dodgers Daily. I'm Casey Porter. I'm so glad that you've decided to tune in. We have a very, very, very special guest today, catcher in the Dodgers organization. Carson Taylor joins Dodgers Daily. So Carson, thank you so much for joining. Absolutely. Thank you for the time. Okay, man. I know you're super busy. This is the third time you've been in on Dodgers Daily, so I'm super appreciative of this. So let's back all the way up. Let's uh, talk about your offseason. Did you get a chance to go back to Atlanta? Tell us where you lived, all the stuff you did, and the emphasis of your off season. Uh, yeah, so I got to go back to uh, back home for a little bit. Um, got to spend some time around some family, um, which was really fun. Uh, so I'm from just outside of Atlanta in uh, Duluth, Georgia. So I got to spend some time there and then uh, came back out to Arizona and I've been out here kind of just working out since then. Yep, so 2022, I know you're a guy that growing up, man, injury just, you just never had to deal with it at all, hardly. So I know last year in some ways had to be very frustrating with you because it seemed like every time you started getting it going, you went you went back on the shelf for a little bit. But also on the other side of that, your right-handed stroke and your defense really, really took off last year. So last year, probably as far as emotions, maybe it was a little bit of a mixed bag for you. Would that be correct? So, I mean, obviously there were some definite positives that came out of uh, last year for me. I mean, just continuing to make strides with the defensive end, um, continuing to work on, you know, the right-handed swing, continue to get that to kind of come along, along with the left-handed swing. Um, I mean, obviously being hurt and kind of in and out of the lineup, it's always hard just because, you know, you got to deal with, you know, <laughs> being in and out, obviously, and everything like that. But um, I think especially kind of the way I ended the year and everything like that, um, kind of gave me some good momentum and helped me, you know, find some things that I can continue to work on through the off season. So I think it gave me some good points to kind of, you know, really jump and go after in the off season. One thing you have to be very proud of is the way that you ended. You hit 286 in September and having to catch a, a, a pitching staff that averages 94 miles an hour and all the guys you had to, to catch and the grind and it's just super hot in Tulsa throughout the summer. So you had to be very proud of the way you finished and headed into the off season. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of myself for, you know, being able to deal with the, you know, this IL stance and everything like that and being in and out and kind of how I handled that. Um, you know, just trying to kind of step back in afterward and, you know, not miss a beat and everything like that. And I mean, catching a staff like that makes my job easy. You know, I mean, when you got guys with stuff that good, you know, makes, makes the game a lot easier to call at that point and makes everything kind of, kind of just that much more fun. That's for sure. Mad props, super impressed, Carson, because first of all, being a switch hitter, and I have been to those batting practices in Tulsa in July and August, and it is so hot during that period. So when you're trying to switch hit, you're having to take cuts from both sides of the plate. Then as the catcher, you know, you're having to also deal with, you're the only position that crosses over between the position players and the pitchers. So you're having to go over all those different scouting reports. So the different amount of hats that you're having to wear as a catcher, Man, that that's a pretty tough role as it goes on, isn't it? I mean, it can be for sure. Um, you know, lucky I got a lot of resources to help me with all that. Um, you know, it's kind of just all about how you how you handle your time at that point. Um, you know, obviously our pitchers help out with that. They do their own research. You know, our coaches are phenomenal when it comes to that kind of stuff. And then, you know, I try to do a lot of my own, you know, when it comes to like pitching game plans and everything like that. Like I try to come prepared for that one. Um, so I usually do that outside of the field before I get there. So it makes it a little easier. But, yeah, it can be a little, little chaotic at times, but in the best ways possible. Yeah, no doubt about it. I know one thing that you take a super amount of pride in is your pitch calling. And I'll tell you what, if you watch this guy call pitches, he's elite at it. So talk about the pride you take in that aspect of your game. I mean, it's definitely been something that, you know, I've taken a lot of pride in growing in and getting better at each and every um, time out. Um, for me, it's, you know, I think it's really fun to kind of learn, you know, what pitchers do well and, you know, how they how they want to go about attacking hitters and everything like that. Um, you know, I mean, for me, a lot of it comes based off just kind of the research and stuff I do, you know, pregame and then um, kind of what we do in the middle of a series and stuff like that and how it kind of evolves and shapes itself. Um, but I mean, I think the biggest point of that is just pitching to what you're, you know, calling pitches based on what your pitcher does well. You know, like you attack with their strengths and, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to get beat, you get beat with what they do best. But, you know, luckily for, you know, with our guys, it makes my job real easy because, you know, what they do, they do really, really well. So I should have said this at the very beginning, but hey, you're, you're Hokies, man. Gosh, they were one game away from the College World Series. That was 
That was a little disappointing. They couldn't beat OU, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it's tough. It was a tough loss, but, you know, I'm really proud of them for the season they put up. Um, you know, it was really, really fun to watch and kind of follow along. Um, so, you know, as a former, former Hokie, I'm super proud of our, uh, our school and I'm super proud of what those guys did. So it's been, it was incredible to watch. I got to ask you, you know, you've mentioned it a couple of times, this pitching staff and Tulsa, I've said this two or three times that, Tulsa, the Tulsa Drillers had the highest average velocity of any pitching staff in the minor leagues. The average pitch thrown by the Drillers last year was 94 miles an hour. That's the average pitch. So what's it like pitching or catching such an electric staff? Uh, I mean, it definitely presents its own challenges for sure. Um, but, you know, like, like I said, I've been super lucky with the fact that, you know, those guys are top of the line when it comes to their stuff and control and everything like that. So for me, it's, you know, just kind of making sure I'm prepared for anything, but at the same point, like I trust them, you know, more than you know anybody at this point. So it's, it's kind of just that trust between the two of us and, you know, them trusting me to do my job there and me trusting them to execute pitches, but it makes my job real easy when they execute nine times out of 10. No doubt about it. Okay. What things did you take in the off season that you feel like, you know what? Hey, I'm probably good enough right now if I can just continue being at this level to be a consistent major league catcher. And then what things did you take away feeling like you needed to improve to be that consistent catcher at the major league level? Um, I mean, I think for me, uh, one of the biggest ones, I mean, just continuing to refine you know, how I receive the ball and everything like that. Um, you know, I think for me, it's a lot of it was also kind of just how I move behind the plate and everything like that. Um, I think you know, me being me being able to move just that much better is going to make it easier for me to throw, easier for easier for me to block. You know, easier for me to get up and out of a crouch. You know, be at just athletic back there. Um, I think between that and then just continuing to get, you know, more comfortable and more accurate with the way I throw the ball too. Um, you know, I I had times last year where, you know, I get a little inaccurate or you know, I'd be a little little hit or miss. And for me, it's just kind of building more consistency with that and you know, continuing to just kind of, you know work on you know the way i throw the ball you know where i put the ball kind of how fast i can get it out stuff like that and i think obviously just refine you know just need to refine the other portions of my game there too yep and you know the dodgers organization they'll, they'll just point blank say it they don't they don't put an emphasis on holding runners so i'm sure as a catcher it's it's a little bit more difficult to throw runners out i know you don't want to speak to that and i won't make you but hey talk about your just everyday routine and spring training what, what a normal day for carson taylor is um i mean right now it's been pretty straightforward um you know i get there you know nice and early in the morning for me it's usually prep you know if i got to lift that day i'll lift um and then kind of when we get into it it's you know usually the you know, group of catchers will go hit in the cage and then we'll probably go stretch and condition after that. And then kind of off that, it's either, you know, individual defense and stuff like that. Um, or we'll just go straight into like catching lives and stuff like that. Um, but then I usually try to get, you know, some form of after practice work in and stuff like that, you know, just kind of keep working on what, what I've been trying to, you know, put in place through the off season and everything like that. You grew up in the Atlanta area, then you went to Virginia Tech in college. So, when you got drafted in in the 2020 draft, had you ever been to Arizona or California before? Uh, I had not, so those were both first for me. But you know, I've, I've grown to really enjoy. You know, I've, I've only been out to California a few times, but I love Arizona. Um, you know, I think it's gorgeous and it's super fun. You know, it's a super fun place to be. Yeah, so do you, I know your goal. I mean, you had a goal, literally. I think you told like your first or second grade teacher, you know, hey, I want to be a professional baseball player someday. So your goal literally was from, you know, from a little kid was to become a professional baseball player. But do you ever have time just to sit back and look at the mountains in California or sit in Arizona and go, hey, you know what? I'm really doing this. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think there's, you know, time in each day to reflect on kind of what you're doing and everything like that. You know, it's always fun to kind of be able to just kind of sit back and look at, you know, the stuff I'm doing and everything like that and be like, you know, I'm living what, what I wanted to be, you know, when I was a little kid, you know, like I'm getting to live that dream and everything like that. And I'm extremely blessed to get to be able to do that. Family get to come out and see you in Arizona? Absolutely. So they're getting ready to come out in about a week or two. So I'm super, super excited to have them out there. I think it's their first time to come watch a spring, you know, come watch spring training and everything like that. It means the world to me. Um, you know, I can't say enough about what they do for me and, you know, how they kind of make make it easy for me to kind of just go out and continue to work and continue to, uh, 
you know, push myself to be the best I can possibly be here, um, both as a human and as a baseball player. Um, you know, I can't can't tell you enough how you know how great my parents have been for me, and you know, just how much they've helped motivate me, and you know, how much support they've given me, and everything like that through all this. You know, the ups and the downs. Um, you know, everything. So they they're my biggest fans in the world. So I can't. I, I still get a kick when I hear you talk about that. I, I think you were, you, broke, you hurt your hand or something like that, and you decided to go play in the Cape. You know, like you hadn't taken but like one round of BP in like six weeks, and you had this great idea, hey, let's go ahead and take some live BPs in the Cape, right? <laughs> you remember that experience, don't you? Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Uh, definitely, you know, in hindsight, maybe maybe not the best choice I've ever made, but, you know, the competitor in me is always going to try and do that regardless of how prepared I am or not. Um, you know, I, I'm always going to go out there and I'm always going to try, you know, give everything I got, whether, you know, it's coming off of hand surgery or if it's, yeah. you know, whether it's, I'm you know, been playing for, you know, days on end. But no matter what, you know, I was just excited to go play against some of the best players in the country. So it ended up being a really good learning experience for me. No doubt. No doubt. I say that because I'm sure mom and dad both got phone calls during that that time and I'm sure you leaned on them pretty good at that period in time the same way that you do even today and it's amazing how you get older how those relationships become even more important to you so hey Carson Taylor you've had a you know a tremendous experience as far as you played at very high level in high school you played at very high level in college now you're in one of the most visible organizations in all of professional sports so you were always that one that kid that wanted to be a professional baseball player for so for those kids that have that same dream that you had as a kid right now what's your message for them um, i mean i think for those kids just enjoy the process you know like baseball's obviously a game that can be very tough um at times and it can be you know you can have the highest of highs and the lowest of lows but no matter what just enjoying the process enjoying you know learning the game enjoying you know getting better each and every day you know just one percent each day you know just continuing to enjoy what you do continuing to have fun with it like that's the biggest that's what this boils down to is just having a good time enjoying the sport itself you know it's i mean can't can't ever take it too seriously but um no just just have fun with it yeah no doubt about it okay one last question and this one is strictly for me number one what's it like catching a 102 mile hour fastball from Bobby Miller, what's it like? Number two, catching Gavin Stone's changeup, and what's it like catching Michael Groves' curveball? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, both all you know, all three of those pitches obviously are top of the line, and each you know each of their respective categories. But I mean, Bobby's fastball. I mean, it's the first time you see it; it's it's something to behold. That's for sure. Um, I mean, it's it's a special special pitch. Um, caught me by surprise the first time I ever caught it um but you know you get you get used to it once you see it a few times but that first that first go around always kind of gives you a little a little bit of an eye-opening experience on you know just how fast it gets on you and everything like that um I mean Grove's curveball um obviously another same thing just really really good pitch he has really good feel for it um I mean gets a ton of swing and miss on it um so I mean it's same thing as Bobby's fastball it's you know top of Pop the line and hit its category, and then Gavin's changeup. I mean, that quite frankly is the best changeup I've ever seen before. Like I don't think I've seen many people that can throw four or five of the same pitch in a row and get four or five swings and misses on it. Um, but I mean, just the feel he has for that, and you know how consistent he is with that. Like that's that one kind of get out of jail free card for him. So um, you know, it's same thing. It's just three special pitches, that's for sure. No doubt. And then you also got to catch Aaron Ocean buying split finger pitch, didn't you? That's probably mm -hmm. crazy, wasn't it? I did. Yeah. No, I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's similar in, you know, in terms of Gavin's changeup, like just unbelievably good pitch. Um, you know, something that he's obviously very confident in throwing and something that's, you know, a huge part of his repertoire and everything like that. So it's definitely, it's, it's definitely fun to catch a lot of the, you know, catch those pitches and just see, you know, how create, you know, the, the movement that comes with that and you know just how good those pitches are no doubt hey you know i hear this all the time from baseball players once you get to double a you really start feeling like you're getting close do you did you get that feeling when you got moved up to, to tulsa last year i mean, was definitely excited for it um yeah i mean obviously it's one step closer for me and you know i think 
you know, at least a big at the beginning of the year, definitely had a little bit of that feeling. Um, you know, and then kind of once the season starts, you know, you're just head down trying to work for it at that point. But yeah, I mean, you definitely know kind of at least when you get moved up and everything like that, like the feeling gets, you know, you get a little bit, you know, just a little bit more of that excitement and everything like that. And, you know, then at that point, it's kind of just putting your head down and trying to go get it at that, you know, go get that next level, basically. No doubt. The mayor of Drillville, Scott Hennessy, your manager, better known as Henny. I know he is a very well, very well loved manager, very much so a player's manager. Being a catcher with that daily grind, I'm sure you appreciate that. I do. I love it. You know, love him as a coach. He's been great for me. Um, you know, he's he's continued to help me grow as a player and as a person. Um, I can't say enough good things about him. Um, you know, just I've I've had so much fun playing for him um, and everything like that. He's such a great person. So, um, you know, I'm super blessed to have him as a coach. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, you know, your former manager, Austin Chubb, there at High Gray Lakes, congratulations to him on his new gig. I think, what is he like, the catching coordinator for the minor leagues now? Is that what his, his gig is, I think? Uh, Something like that. I, I'm not 100% sure. I know he's a coordinator now, but which is, you know, a really big step up for him, obviously, and everything like that. It's, you know, very well deserved. Um, so, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm super excited for him and, you know, It'll be fun. It'll be fun to get him, you know, have him as a traveling coordinator, hopefully. Um, so you get to see him during the season a little bit. All right. Well, let me give you some advice. Okay. You're going to need about three bucks when you get on that Turner Turnpike and you head west to Oklahoma City this year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll keep hopefully, we'll see you there you. at the Bricktown Ballpark. Okay. All right, Absolutely. Carson. Thank you for mm-hmm. joining Dodgers Daddy for the third time. You're such a wonderful young man. I so enjoyed this. I'm a huge fan of yours. So thank you again for, for coming on in. Yeah, 100%. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it.